in a couple of the conditions that we've talked about, you've mentioned cholesterol. Uh, yet one of the most popular, I think the most popular prescription drug or statin drugs, cholesterol lowering drugs. Is there a connection? There? I, I, I hate statin drugs. I absolutely hate them. I've, and yesterday I gave a, a long talk mm -hmm. explaining, I mean, there's so much evidence. They cause so many problems. And they certainly don't. Uh, it's, not, it's not a fair trade-off. You'd never, you'd never win, in my opinion, almost under any circumstance, taking a statin drug, uh, given all the damage it's going to cause, compared to the slight chance that you might avoid a heart attack. You know, which I think is true. I think they do prevent heart attacks, but in very modest amounts. And lots of people have to take lots of drugs before one person avoids one heart attack. So it's not worth it for that, in my opinion. Um, so many problems, and of course. Cholesterol itself is a key one because cholesterol is so important to all the cells, especially the neurons. The brain has 25% of the body's cholesterol with only a small percentage of the body's mass, like 3% or something. So 5%, um, I forget what the number is, but very small percentage, much, much higher cholesterol to mass ratio in the brain. Um, it really needs that cholesterol to be able to work properly. And so, and, and statins are connected to cognitive disorder and memory problems, you know, and, and transient global amnesia. They cause all these things. It's, I, I did studies on statin drugs, again, looking at the web, looking at people's uh, own uh, individuals' reports of their own side effect experiences with statins compared to other drugs. And you can just look at statistical differences in words and find a huge list of, of nasty things that are caused, that are, people are mentioning more often in their reports on statin drug side effects compared to other drugs. Things like ALS in a, and a dementia and um, Various problems, of course, with the kidneys and the liver, and um, all kinds of muscle muscle pain. Huge, huge, significant uh, report of muscle pain, muscle weakness. You know, um, they really clobber the muscles. That's where they. That's their biggest thing they damage first, particularly in women. And so they they tell you take this statin drug and go home and exercise every day, and that's a really bad combination. And in fact, papers have shown that that exercise is of no benefit if you're taking a statin drug. But if you aren't taking a statin drug, then the exercise is good for you, you know? So it basically derails your um, opportunity to improve yourself through these other things that are known to be beneficial. They're no longer beneficial because of the statin. What I think it's doing is actually very interesting because I think it's pretending to be cholesterol sulfate. It actually suppresses the same enzyme that cholesterol sulfate suppresses in the cell. And it basically turns off the cells. It says, says to the cell, you know what, don't make cholesterol. We, we don't need it. So cholesterol sulfate has the right to say that because it's saying, hey, I've got cholesterol, you don't need it, right? So don't bother to make it, here it is. Whereas the satin says, oh yeah, I've got cholesterol, don't worry about it, don't make it. But it doesn't have cholesterol, you know, so it's lying. And the cell gets complacent and says, okay, good, I won't make any cholesterol, we don't need it. And meanwhile, everybody's dying for cholesterol, so you have a huge cholesterol deficiency throughout the body uh, and, uh, because the statin drug is lying to the liver. And the liver then is complacent, doesn't bother to make the cholesterol. So it's really, um, there's so much evidence that statins are bad. It fascinates me that they've been able to do this incredible sales you know, tactic yeah. to convince all the doctors and all the patients that, oh my God, I have to take this drug. And when you look, actually, you look at statistical, I'm always looking at correlations. Fascinatingly enough, if you look at the correlation over time from hospital discharge data that are maintained by the US CDC over time um, of high cholesterol or high LDL, LDL is going up exactly in step with glyphosate usage on corn and soy crops. So I think glyphosate is causing our problem that we have now with too much cholesterol in our blood. And it's not going up. If you look at a uh, heart attack, it's completely unrelated. It's like doing something completely different from what the cholesterol is doing. So here they say, oh yeah, high cholesterol correlated, you know, heart attack. It's not true. The high cholesterol is not correlated with the heart attack. Uh, statins lower cholesterol as a side effect. You know, it's not how they prevent the heart attack. So it's really all mixed up. The whole yeah. thing is all mixed up. And then the glyphosate is actually the thing that's causing the heart high cholesterol. And that makes a huge amount of sense because it messes up the liver's ability to ship out the bile acids. And this is because of the cyp enzymes. So all these, I told you the cytochrome P450 enzymes get disrupted by glyphosate. And it um, prevents the uh, liver from shipping out bile acids. Well, bile acids contain lots of cholesterol. So the liver normally would recirculate the cholesterol to the gut. Uh, instead of shipping out as LDL. So when the liver can't ship it out as bile acids, it has to ship it out as LDL instead, and that's why the LDL is high. So it's a very clear explanation. And it's even been shown in mouse studies that that's the case. If you block the bile acids, you get high LDL. So um, 
it, you know, it's like, it's so crazy. Yeah. I mean, we live in a crazy world where all the advice is wrong, you know. They say low-fat diet, take a statin drug. The, the, the toxic food is fine, you know, eat all the processed food, no yeah. problem. It's good. Low, and also, of course, the fats, they're screwed up on which fats they recommend. They recommend these, so, soybean oil is probably the very worst yeah. oil you could possibly be using. Yeah. And of course, it's the cheapest, so it's going everywhere. And um, even very early studies showed that soybean oil was bad. I've got a study from 1974 looking at um, I think cows, calves. And they were trying to, I think they were thinking, oh, maybe we can do something cheaper here. Because back then they were just starting to see soybean oil as a possibility. They wanted to see. And they had been, so they replaced in the feed, they replaced lard or, or um, the beef fat, tallow. They had to experiment one with tallow, one with lard, one with soybean oil, different groups of calves. And the ones that were on the soybean oil, were the ones that had the highest cholesterol in their blood. So it's like totally mixed up, you know? Yeah. That's the one that doesn't have any cholesterol in it. So it's like, you know, eat cholesterol in order to lower your cholesterol. And nobody believes that. They, oh, I've got to go on a low cholesterol diet. That's the worst thing you can do. You've got to eat the seafood. You know, these are things that contain cholesterol, the meat, the seafood. Eat those things. And that will actually lower your cholesterol, you know? It makes perfect sense to me, but it doesn't make sense to most people because they're not thinking that. Thinking if I'm eating cholesterol, it's going to get in my blood, right. but it doesn't work that way. You know, your liver has to produce this LDL particle because you're not eating cholesterol. Otherwise, it wouldn't have to do that, and the liver could take a vacation and not have to make cholesterol, which is a difficult thing for the liver to do and a distraction from its other duties, you know? So it totally makes sense to eat foods that are high in cholesterol, especially for Alzheimer's. Yeah. <laughs> so.